Live from Madrid, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Madrid 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Good afternoon from Madrid, everybody. Good morning on the East Coast. Good really early morning on the West Coast. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're here day one at HPE Discover Madrid 2017. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host, Peter Burris. Randy Meyer is here. He's the Vice President and General Manager of the Mission Critical Business Unit at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And he's joined by Alexander Zhuk, who is the, uh, uh, the SAP practice lead at El Dorado. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Randy, we were just reminiscing about the number of times you've been on theCUBE, the consecutive you know, years. It's yeah. like, the, it's like the, the Patriots winning the AFC East. It just <laughs> keeps yeah, happening. Or, or Cal Ripken, year after year after year. Probably be Me and Tom Brady. Cal, you're the Cal Ripken of, uh, of theCUBE. <laughs> so, so give us the update, what's happening in the, the Mission Critical Business Unit, what's going on here at Discover? Well, so just lots of exciting things going on. In fact, we just finished the main general session keynote, and that was the coming out party for our new Superdome Flex product, right? So we've been in the Mission Critical space for you know, quite some time now, driving the HANA business. We've got 2,500 customers around the world, small, large, and with our acquisition last year of SGI, we got this fabulous technology that not only scales up to the biggest and most baddest things that you can imagine, to the point where we're talking about Stephen Hawking using that to explore the universe, but it scales down four sockets, one terabyte, for lots of customers doing various things. So I, I look at that part of the mission critical business and it's just so exciting to take technology and watch it scale both directions to the biggest problems that are out there, whether they're commercial and enterprise, and Alexander will talk about lots of things we're doing in that space, or even high performance computing now. So we've kind of expanded into that arena. So that's really the kind of the big news. Superdome Flex coming out and really expanding that customer base. But, yeah. Uh, Superdome Flex, any memory in that baby? <laughs> so, well, 32 <laughs> sockets, 48 terabyte if you want to go that big, and it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger over time as we get more density that's there. And we really do have customers in the commercial space using that. Mm. I've got customers that are building massive ERP systems, massive data warehouses to go address that kind of memory. All right, let's hear from the customer. Uh, Alexander, first, first of all, tell us about your role and tell us about Eldorado. I'm responsible for SAP basis and infrastructure, and uh, I'm working in Eldorado, who is uh, um, one of the largest consumer electronics uh, network in Russia. We have more than 600 shops all over the country in more than 200 cities and towns, and have more than 16,000 employees. Uh, we have more than 50,000 stock keeping units and uh, proceeding over three and a half million orders via our internet shop annually. And let's see, so SAP practice lead, obviously this is a HANA story. So can you take us through your HANA journey? What led to the decision for HANA? Maybe give us the before and uh, sort of during and after. What, leading up to the decision to move to HANA, what was life like and why HANA? We first moved our business warehouse system to HANA back in 2011. Uh, at the time, we got a strong business requirements to have quick reporting. So, retail business is a business who is need and very uh, rapid decision making. So, after we moved to HANA, we get uh, the speed increasing of uh, reports generating uh, in 15 times. Uh, we got um, stock replenishment reports nine times faster, and we got 50 minute sales uh, reports every hour instead of two hours. Uh, Versus, uh, may, may I repeat this? Yes. No, no. Yes. no, it makes sense. Okay. So, so the move to HANA was really precipitated by a need to get more data faster, so in memory allows you to, to, to do that. And what about the infrastructure platform underneath? Was it always HP, HP at the time? That was 2011. 
What's HP's role, HPE's role in that kind of Initially, uh, we run our business, business system in Germany, uh, primarily on IBM solutions. But then, according to the law requirements, uh, we intended to go uh, to Russia. And here, we choose HPE solutions as the main platform for our HANA database and traditional databases. Okay. So uh, data residency forced you to move this whole solution back to Russia. Now, uh, if, I may, if I may, Dave, uh, one of the things that we're talking about, and I want to test this with you, Alexander, is businesses not only have to be able to scale, but we talk about plastic infrastructure, where they have to be able to change their workloads. They have to be able to go up and down, but they also have to be able to add quickly. How did, as you went through the migration process, how were you able to use the technology to introduce new capabilities into the systems to help your business grow even faster? Uh, at that time, before migration, we, uh, we had a strong business requirements for our business growing and have some forecast how our Vahana will grow. So we, we represented to our uh, possible partners our needs. For example, uh, our main requirement was uh, possibility to scale up our CRM on HANA system up to nine terabytes memory. So at that time, there was only HPE who could provide that kind of solution. And, and, and did you, so you migrated from a traditional RDBMS environment. Your data warehouse previously was a was a, was a traditional database, and then. Is that right? And then you move to HANA? Uh, not all systems, but, no, but, uh, but the most critical, uh, most speed critical system. It's How? our business warehouse and CRM system. How hard was that? Okay, so the EDW and the CRM. How difficult was that migration? Did you have to freeze code? Is it, was it a painful migration? Yes, uh, from the application point of view, it was very painful because mm -hmm. we had to change anything. Our, some of our reports uh, uh, had to be completely changed, reviewed. Uh, we had to adopt some above code for the new database. So also um, we got some HANA level troubles because it was very, very early bird. Early days of, of HANA. I mean, I think it was announced in 2011, right? Yes. <laughs> Maybe 2012. <laughs> so, well, I think that's one of the things for most customers that we talk to. It's a journey, right? You're moving from kind of a tried and true environment that you run for years, but you want the benefits of in memory, of speed, of massive data that you can use to change your business. But you have to plan that. Right, and, and it was a great point. You have to plan it's going to scale up, some things might have to scale out, and at the same time, you have to think about the application migration, the data migration, the data residency rules. Different companies or different countries have different rules on what has to be there, and I think that's one of the things we try to take into account as HPE when we're designing systems. I want to let you partition them. I want to let you scale them up or down depending on the workload that's there because you don't just have one. You have BW and CRM. You have development environments, test environments, staging environments. The more we can help that look similar and give you flexibility, the easier that is for customers. And then I think it's incumbent on us also to make sure we support our customers with knowledge, service, expertise because it really is a journey. And, but you're right, 2011, it was the Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> so give us the HPE HANA commercial. Everybody always tells us, oh, we're great at HANA, we're, we're best at HANA. What makes HPE best at HANA different with HANA? What makes us best at HANA? One, we're all in on this. We have a partnership with SAP. We're designing for the large scale, as you said, that nobody else was building up into this space. Lots of people are building one terabyte things, okay. But when you really want to get real, when you want to get to 12 terabytes, when you want to get to 24, to 48, we're not only building systems capable of that, we're doing co-engineering and co-innovation work with SAP to make that work, to test that. I put systems on site in Waldorf, Germany, 
to allow them to go do that. Um, we'll go diagnose software issues in the HANA code jointly and say, here's where you're stressing that and how can we go leverage that. You couple that with our services capability and our move towards, you'll consume HANA in a lot of different ways. There will be some of it that you want on-premise, in-house. There'll be some things that you say, that part of it might want to be in the cloud. Yes, my answer to all of those things is yes. How do I make it easy to fit your business model, your business requirements, and the way you want to consume things economically, how do I allow you to say yes to that? 2,500 customers, more than half of the installed base of all HANA systems worldwide reside on Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I think we're doing a pretty good job of enabling customers to say, that's a real choice that we can go forward with, not just today, but tomorrow. Alexander, are you doing things in the uh, cloud, I'm sure you are, but like, what are you doing in the cloud? Are you doing HANA in the cloud? Mm, we, we have not a uh, traditional cloud, as it used to say now, we have a private cloud. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, during some circumstances, we uh, got all the hardware uh, into our property, and now it is operating by our partner, a Trinity company. Uh, they're responsible for all, all the layers, from hardware layer, service contracts, hardware maintenance, and up to the uh, basic operation system support and the CP support. So if you had to do it all over again, what might you do differently? What advice would you give to other customers going down this journey? Uh, my advice is to um, at first, choose the right team and the right service provider. Because uh, when you got a solution, some technical overview, architectural review, you should uh, get some, some confirmation from vendor. At first, it should be confirmed by HPE, it should be confirmed by SAP. Also, there is a financial question, how to, how to sponsor all this thing. And we got all these things from HPE and our service partner, Adrinti. Great. Give you the last word. So, one, it's an exciting time. We're watching this explosion of data happening, and I believe we've only just scratched the surface, right? Today we're looking at, you know, tens of thousands of SKUs for a customer and looking at the velocity of that going through a retail chain. But every device we have is going to have a sensor in it. It's going to be connected all the time. It's going to be generating data to the point where you say, I'm going to keep it and I'm going to use it because it's going to let me take real time action. Someday they'll be able to know that the mobile phone they care about is in their store and pop up an offer to a customer that's exactly meaningful to do that. That confluence of sensor data, location data, all the things that we will generate over time the ability to take action on that in real time, whether it's fix a part before it fails, create a marketing offer to the person that's already in the store that allows them to buy more, that allows us to search the universe and search for, you know, how did we all get here? That's what's happening with data, it is exploding. We're at the very front edge of what I think is going to be transformative for, you know, businesses and organizations everywhere, it is cool. I think the advent of in-memory, data analytics, real time, it's going to change how we work, it's going to change how we play, frankly, it's going to change humankind when we watch some of these researchers doing things at a massive level. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and the key is being able to do that wherever the data lives. Absolutely. Gentlemen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank Alexander you for having Randy, us. you're welcome. Great to see you guys again. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Peter and I will be back with our next guest right after this short break. This is theCUBE. We're live from HPE Discover Madrid 2017. We'll be right back.